Let's have a look at the final challenge from week one. So, so far we've seen Python functions that have required parameters. As an example of that, consider one of the first functions we looked at, which was add two. Add two required the user to provide two parameters A and B. So if we called add two by specifying the value of A as one and the value of B as two, presumably and hopefully the function would return the value of three. But if we called add two and we only specified one of those parameters, for example, A, then what we would expect is that the function throws um, some sort of error associated with not providing the right number of parameters or keyword arguments. Now it turns out in Python it's possible to have default values for these parameters if you wish. So we've been challenged to write a function called superhero name that accepts two parameters of type string, first name and super surname. The parameter super surname should have the default value of the spider and the purpose of the function is to concatenate the names, the first name and the super surname, and return the resulting superhero name. So we've been given a couple of test cases. The first is superhero name, and we've only specified one parameter, which is Tom, and that returns Tom the spider, because the default value of our super surname is the spider. And then in the second test case, we've overwritten the value of super surname, the default value, with Ant-Man. So what returns is Tom, Ant-Man. So underneath that, we've got some Python code um, implementing um, a simple version of this um, where we've required to specify two parameters, first name and super surname. And what it returns is first name concatenated with a space concatenated with super surname. So if we hop over to Python and run that code, what we can see is that the result um, and result two, which is the values that we're returning from these two functions, superhero name, um, where we specified Tom the spider, and superhero name, where we specified Tom and Ant-Man, is what we would expect, Tom the spider and Tom Ant-Man. And we can see that's been printed out to our IPython console down here. So if we delete one of the parameters and call it what we expect now is that superhero name will throw an error. And that's what it's done. It's a type error and it says superhero name is missing one required positional argument, super surname, which is what we expected. So we need to find a way to provide super surname with a default value. So let's think about how we could search internet resources in order to help us do that. So the first thing we're gonna type into our search engine is Python. Then we're going to type in function, then we're going to type in default, um, and then we're going to type in uh, argument. But we could have used the word parameter instead, that's sometimes used interchangeably with the word argument. Um, and instead of default, we might have gone with optional. So number of hits, let's have a look at the first one. So this is telling us that in Python, you can define a, a function that takes a variable number of arguments. You will learn to define such functions using default keywords and arbitrary arguments in this article. This sounds promising. Okay, so let's have a look. Uh, so what they've done is they defined a function called greet, which has two required parameters, name and message. Um, and it basically prints out hello, whatever the name of the person is, and then the message. So for example, if you called greet Monica, good morning, it would say, hello, Monica, good morning. Ah, so here we go, Python default arguments. So this is what you're after. Um, so they've modified this function so that now message um, has a default argument. And that's really, turns out that's really simple. So all they're doing in the function declaration is they're saying message equals good morning. So that means for when, when they call greet Kate here, what that's gonna do is print out, hello Kate, good morning. And they didn't need to specify the good morning in the keyword argument list because it's already got a default parameter there. 
So let's see if we can transfer that learning across to our example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give super surname a default value, and that is the spider. Not the spudder, the spider. Okay, so now last time it threw a, a, an error when we tried to run this code. Let's run it again. This time it's worked, and what we can see is that the result of this first call is Tom the spider, and that's what's been printed out down here, and that's exactly what we wanted. And then in the second case, what we've done is we have uh, overwritten the value of super surname with Ant-Man, and that's all default values do. Now there's a couple of, well, there's one particular thing you need to watch out for, and that is if you're using default values, they need to be um, the last in the list. So to give you an, a practical example of that, I'm gonna change this around slightly and I'm gonna say first name has an optional value instead of super surname. Let's try and run that and we get an error and that is a syntax error. Non-default argument follows default argument. So that simply means that default arguments have to be the last ones in the list. Once you've specified a default argument, everything after that has to also be um, optional or default parameters. So let's fix that once again. So we could, of course, have um, both of these as optional. If we delete this now and run it, we get Tom the spider as a totally default answer. So we could now say first name equals Mike. run that. Oh, spelt first name wrong. And then we get Mike the spider instead of Tom the spider. And that's all there is to it.